Hello students and welcome back to Mr. Hargrove's math class where today we're going to continue in our proportions unit and this time we're going to talk about the percent bar. Please make sure that you have a pencil, paper, and a calculator with you as we dive into some of these problems. Um, the learning target for today reads as such. Students will learn how to utilize the percent bar to solve various problems involving percent. The success criteria, students will know that they are on track to reaching the learning target when they can read the word problem and determine if they are solving to find the part, the whole, or the percent. This is very important. Um, step two, set up the percent bar with X and the other numbers in the correct place. Number three, use cross products to create an equation. And number four, solve the equation to determine the value of x. So what is a percentage? A percentage is a ratio of a number to 100. So you could think about it again, ratio is another way to say fraction. So it's a number over 100. The symbol percent is used to indicate the percent. So anytime you see that sign, you're dealing with a percent. And the word percent literally means per, cent or per hundred so if you think about it six percent that means six out of 100 and where do we see percentages in everyday life well we see them all over the place if you look at the uh, first example there chris bought a jacket at 25 percent off so we definitely see it when we're shopping um, sandra got 95 percent on her science test so we see percents when we talk about our grades which you all should be concerned with at this time. Uh, Mimi has read 50% of her book. We talk percents all the time. You know, when we say we're halfway through, finished with the book, halfway through the movie, halfway there. Again, that's another way of saying 50%. So we talk in percents all the time. Jordan's iPad has 17% battery left. You look at your phone right now and see how much battery it has left. We communicate in percents all the time. And then of course in finances, it says Max pays 8% interest on his mortgage. So we definitely use percents all the time when we're dealing finance, but there, this is not an exhaustive list. There are many other places where percents are used. So see if you can think of some on your own. So proportions for percent problems will look like this. As I said, we've been in our proportions unit um, so you've already seen items that look somewhat like this. When we talk about proportions, we're talking about setting two fractions equal to one another. Now today, as we deal with the percent proportion, you're going to be dealing with three primary aspects. You're dealing with the percent, the whole, and the part. So those are three aspects that you're going to be dealing with. The 100, 100% is always going to be 100%. So the variable X can be placed in the part, the whole, or the percent, and you're going to determine that based on the word problem. And it's the best way to learn percents is really just to jump into some problems. So that's what we'll do here. If we look at problem number one, it says a construction job for a mall. At a construction job for a mall, 12 painters were tasked with painting the interior. These painters made up 60% of the painting crew. So how many painters in all worked on this job? Now, as I go through this, I have to determine, am I trying to figure out the part, the whole, or the percent? So let's look at this problem here, and hopefully some things jump out to you based on the question. And if we look at it, it says, how many painters in all worked on this job site? So if you look, they are trying to figure out the whole, because that phrase in all means the total amount. So we're trying to figure out the whole. They already told us that 12 painters were tasked. So that's going to be part. That's the part. And then, of course, this number has a percent sign next to it, which means that it is our percent. 
So when you look at the percent proportion, like we saw on the previous page, I want you to now make a percent bar. And this is what the percent bar is gonna look like. It's just gonna be a bar, and you can think about it like the bar on your phone. 100%, I wanna encourage you to always put 100% right here. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will always be there when you get uh, good at solving these problems. You're gonna find that you can move the bar around and organize it your own way. But for now, we wanna keep things simple. I was always taught the first time you're learning something, try to keep it simple. So let's always keep the percents on the left side. So we'll just say this whole left side is gonna be percents. So since I know that this is percents and this is 100%, I'm gonna go ahead and put 60% down here also. Now what I wanna see is what matches with 100, what matches with the 60. Well, if you read through the problem, it says 12 painters were tasked with painting the interior these painters made up 60%. So they're saying that this, this 12 is 60%. So therefore over here, I'm gonna go ahead and put that we have 12 over here. And I do not know how many workers in all. When you look at 100%, remember that represents the total. Do I know how many workers in all worked on this job site? No, I don't. So I'm gonna put X over here. So now I have a proportion. Look what we've just done. We've made a proportion. And that proportion is 100 over 60 is equal to X over 12. And what we're going to do here is we're going to solve this proportion, which you've already uh, been practicing with that. We're going to use cross products. Okay, 60 times X, that's gonna give you 60X equals 100 times 12. 100 times 12 is 1200. I'm now gonna divide both sides by 60. And when I do, that's gonna give me X equals 20. So there were 20 painters on this site. That is how you use the percent proportion or the percent bar to solve problems. So what I want you to do, get into the habit of doing this. Let's, let's have this side of the bar for percents. Have this side over here just for numbers that are not percent percents on this side, numbers that are not percents on this side, and you'll be good to go, okay? Feel free to pause, replay this video as needed. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to our second example. So it says there are 30 students in a class and 70% of these students passed their history test. What number of these students did not pass their test? Well, we need to determine what the numbers in the problem represent. So it says that there are 30 students in the class, 70% of them passed. So this 30, that represents the total number of students. So that is the whole. 70% of the students passed. It says what number of these students did not pass. Now, this question can be kind of tricky because you notice that they said 70% passed. 70% passed, but then the question says how many of these students did not pass? So that one they're doing a little, little, just a little trickery, but nothing that, that, uh, that you can't figure out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up my bar and 100% will always be right here when you're setting up the bar. 
And what I'm thinking to myself, what number matches with 100%? What number represents the, the total, the whole? Well, it's right here. There's 30 students, so that represents my, my whole. And now I wanna ask myself, uh, did they give me any other percent in the problem? And they did. They said 70% of these students passed, but the question says what number of these students did not pass? So here's a trick you have to do. I know percents are always out of 100. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to subtract that 70% that passed, and that's gonna give me 30% did not pass. And that's the percent that's gonna go right here. I need the percent that did not pass so that I can figure out the number of students that did not pass. So X is gonna go here. That is my proportion. It is 100 over 30 is equal to 30 over X. And now I'm just gonna use my cross products and I'm gonna solve this 100 times X is 100x, 30 times 30, well that's going to be 3 times 3, but I'm going to add two zeros, so it's 100x equals 900, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 100, and that's going to leave me with x equals 9. So what number of students did not pass? I will say 9 students did not pass. Anytime you solve a math problem, you should go back and read the question and insert your answer to make sure that it makes sense. All right. We'll do one more, one more. This lesson will not be very long, so Let's look at this last example. It says the graph below shows the results of a survey that was taken in a neighborhood of dog owners. What percent of the dog owners have a collie as their type of dog? So what percent of the dog owners have a collie as their type of dog? I'm hoping that in your mind you're already thinking about where X is going to go in this problem. So I am going to go ahead and get us started. The question is pretty telling. It's pretty straightforward. We set up our percent bar. 100% will always be up here. Um, now the question says what percent? So we don't know the percent that goes here, so I'm gonna put an X and see what other information did they give me. Did they give me any information relating to the whole or the part? Well, I have a survey, so what I need to do is I need to figure out how many people participated in this survey. And what I can do is just add up all of the the columns here, we got 15 that chose a collie, we got 20 that chose a terrier, 10 of them chose a pug, and 5 chose golden receiver. So now if I add all these up, I'll get a total of how many people participated in the survey. So let's do that. So we get a total 50 people participated in the survey. So that's going to go right over here, represent my whole. Now of these 50 people, do we know the number that chose Kali? And yeah, that's here in the uh, chart. So now I have my proportion and I can cross multiply and solve for X. We can do this. So 50 times X, well, that's gonna give me 50X equals 
100 times 15. So I'm working with 50x equals 1500. I then need to divide both sides by whatever number is next to x, which is that 50. And when I do, I get x equals 30. And since the 30 is in the percent, and the question says what percent, that's my answer, 30%. So this question asked me to figure out the percent and we did it. I always say, the more you practice these types of problems, the better you will get at it. So please make sure you take advantage of your practice time. I appreciate your attention. We got this. It's a fairly new concept, but I, I'm very confident that if you practice it, you're gonna be great. Uh, please make sure that you give this video a like if you found it helpful. And also subscribe to my channel so that you get uh, push out information whenever I uh, upload new content. And also, please go check out my video on percent of change, which is the ne next topic that we're going to discover. Again, I appreciate your attention. We'll see you next time.